genius called Paul Dirac. Last time I was in London, I went to see Westminster Abbey. It is a wonderful experience to walk in this great church and see the tombs and monuments of some of the greatest men lived in England. While walking in the nave, I came across the tombs of Sir Isaac Newton and Charles Darwin. Near Newton's monument, I saw the memorial stone laid in honor of Paul Dirac. The inscription on the stone said, 1902, P.A.M. Dirac, O.M., Physicist, 1984. You can also see Dirac equation on this stone, which describes the behavior of the electron. Paul Dirac was one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics. Yet we don't hear much about him because throughout his life he kept a low profile. When he was awarded Nobel Prize, he wanted to decline it because he thought it would draw unnecessary attention towards him. Many famous physicists were mystified by Dirac's personality. Niels Bohr called him the strangest man. Albert Einstein said, I have trouble with Dirac, this balancing on the dizzying path between a genius and madness is awful. First let me give you some external facts about his life. 1902, Dirac was born at Bristol on August 1902. Paul Dirac was the son of a French father and English mother. He grew up in England. 1918, Dirac became a student of electrical engineering at the University of Bristol. 1921, Dirac graduated as an electrical engineer with first class honors. 1923, Dirac became a graduate student at St. John's College, Cambridge. During those initial months at Cambridge, Dirac knew almost nothing about quantum theory, but he fell in the right hands. Ralph Fowler, a master of the quantum theory, became Dirac's supervisor. Under his direction, Dirac became an expert in quantum theory within two years. 1925, Dirac developed his own version of quantum mechanics. Dirac met Niels Bohr in May 1925. Niels Bohr became a personal friend and remained a major influence on the life of Dirac. In July 1925, Dirac met Werner Heisenberg when he visited Cambridge. Heisenberg was a German theoretical physicist known for his uncertainty principle and was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1932 for the creation of quantum mechanics. You see, early in his career, Dirac was sitting with all these big, big luminaries of quantum theory like Niels Bohr and Max Born and Werner Heisenberg and Schrodinger and Albert Einstein. These pioneers of quantum mechanics are in their 20s, so young that people were calling them quantum boys. During his years at Cambridge, Dirac started a lifelong friendship with two missionaries to India, Right Reverend Henry Whitehead and his wife Isabel. The couple were Oxford educated mathematicians and spent 20 years in India as missionaries. 
Gandhi spent one week in their home in Madras. Isabel Whitehead, being a mathematician herself, used to describe God as a mathematician. She believed that God created the universe in the language of mathematics. And she challenged Dirac to see the power of the mathematics to unravel the mysteries of nature. Dirac concluded that the best way of understanding nature's regularities was through mathematics. So you see in his 20s, Dirac was seeing mathematics and its beauty to understand nature. Then in 1926, Dirac submitted a dissertation entitled Quantum Mechanics and was awarded the PhD degree. In 1927, Dirac published his paper entitled The Quantum Theory of the Emission and Absorption of Radiation. He also attended Solvay Conference in Brussels where he met Einstein for the first time. Their objective was to bring world's finest physicists to reflect on the problems of quantum theory as a group. Here in 1927 Solvay Conference, you can see Paul Dirac standing right behind Albert Einstein. In 1928, Dirac submitted his first paper on the Dirac equation that expounded the relativistic quantum theory of the electron. 1930, Dirac published his influential The Principles of Quantum Mechanics. It became one of the greatest textbooks in physics, which can be compared to Newton's Principia in its stature. 1931, based on his equation, Dirac predicted anti-electrons, new particles with the same mass as the electron, but with negative charge. 1932, Dirac was elected Location Professor of Mathematics in Cambridge University. Location Professorship is the most famous and most prestigious professorship in the entire world. It was once held by Sir Isaac Newton and Charles Babbage, the founder of computer. Dirac was only 30 years old when he became Location Professor of Mathematics at Cambridge University. 1933, Paul Dirac won Nobel Prize for Physics. Dirac became Nobel Laureate when he was just 31 years old. On January 2, 1937, Dirac was married to Margit, who would be his wife for the next 47 years. So those are some of the bare facts about Dirac's life. I wanted to familiarize his life to you before I tell about his achievements. Now let us uh, talk about his achievements, the impact of his work on science and technology. First, quantum theory. Quantum theory scares most people. That explains why there are so many myths and misunderstandings people develop regarding this theory. At the beginning of the 20th century, Two discoveries completely changed the way we see the world, the theory of relativity and the quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is a model of physics that was developed in the first half of 20th century. It came to replace the classical Newtonian views on very large scales, like you want to send some astronauts to moon Newtonian mechanics still works, Newton's physics still works, but on very small scales it fails. On very small scale, you need quantum mechanics. That's the uniqueness of quantum mechanics. It works for both very large scale and very small scale physics. Quantum theory says that the world at a fundamental level is made of fields such as electric field or magnetic field or gravitational field. And when we look at these fields, we see them as particles. The particles are really vibrations or excitations. There are two fundamental kinds of particles, bosons and fermions. 
those terms were actually coined by Dirac. Bosons are particles that carry forces such as photons that carry electromagnetic force. And then there are fermions. Fermions are matter particles like electrons, quarks and neutrinos. So everything we see like solar system, the planet, the trees and flowers, cats and bats, our bodies, we are all made up of fermions. Now let us go a little bit into the history of quantum theory. Quantum theory was discovered by Max Planck. The first decade of quantum physics was dominated by Planck. His 1900 theory of black body radiation, it opened a new approach to physics, heralding a frontier that exposed atomic and subatomic worlds to human understanding. Later Niels Bohr built on this work with his 1913 theory of atomic structure. Bohr dominated the second decade. In the third decade, we got Werner Heisenberg and Erwin Schrodinger. They developed quantum theory with their equations in 1926. They described how a quantum system will progress over time under the influence of any force. Heisenberg and Schrodinger developed two different versions of quantum theory. Heisenberg developed the matrix version of quantum mechanics, while Schrodinger developed wave mechanics version. Both versions gave similar results, but everyone wondered about the relationship between the two. They were like two different languages with no relationship between them. Who can bridge this gap? That is when Paul Dirac entered the scene. Dirac developed a unique version of quantum mechanics. He was the first to introduce mathematics of creation and annihilation into quantum theory. Dirac's theory brought Heisenberg's matrix mechanics and Schrodinger's wave mechanics together. In the fall of 1926, he showed the relationship between these two theories with his paper on the theory of quantum mechanics. Using mathematical prowess, Dirac also demystified Schrodinger's equation. The 1920s were dominated by Werner Heisenberg, Erwin Schrodinger, and Paul Dirac. The years between 1925 and 1933, in terms of Dirac's life, between his ages of 23 and 31, he developed his own interpretation of quantum mechanics. Remember, there are three figures in Dirac, a mathematician, a physicist, and an engineer. Those three figures were working in one body with one mind. Mathematicians' analysis of pure thought, exploring the physicist's passion to understand the laws of nature, combined with an engineer's quest to see practical results. Dirac brought a revolution in quantum mechanics. Even scientists could not understand the complex mathematics behind his theories, but they were shocked by the predictions of his theory. There is a story about Dirac giving a lecture on quantum mechanics. Dirac gave his lecture and sat down. The moderator said, anyone has questions? Someone got up and said, I don't understand the equation on the top right hand corner of the blackboard. Dirac was silent. Everyone was looking at Dirac for a response. After a long silence, the moderator prompted Dirac for an answer. Professor Dirac, are you going to answer this doctor's question? Dirac said, that was not a question. It was a comment. That was not a question. It was a comment. Even Einstein had to spend hours and hours to understand Dirac's theory and his mathematics. After understanding the final page, Einstein said, Dirac to whom, in my opinion, we were the most logically perfect presentation of quantum mechanics. Now, let us talk about Dirac equation, which I inscribed on his memorial at Westminster Abbey. 
In 1928, Paul Dirac presented the quantum theory of the electron. This new mathematical equation could be used to calculate the quantum behavior of electrons. It described the interaction of electrons with magnetic and electric fields. Dirac's equation also explained the spin of electrons, that is the angular momentum. It explained mathematically why the electron had the spin 1 by 2, why they behave like tiny magnets with north and south poles. Dirac's theory was first of its kind. It brought quantum physics and special theory of relativity together. When Dirac was a teenager, he read about Einstein's theory of relativity and he spent many years laboring to reconcile Einstein's theory of relativity with the quantum mechanics. Now it came to fruition and out of his quest, Dirac equation was created. It revealed so many marvelous secrets of the universe and forever changed our understanding of the nature of reality. Now here is the most important thing. Dirac's equation, it predicted the existence of antimatter. Cosmology, the study of the origin and the maintenance of the universe, and also the astrophysics, the particle physics, they would never be the same again. The early universe started with almost equal amounts of matter and antimatter. What is so interesting about this is that Paul Dirac was the first person to predict the existence of antimatter entirely through the power of mathematics. He did not look through a telescope. He did not look through a microscope. He did not build a million dollar laboratory or he did not build a billion dollar particle accelerator. He just used his mathematical calculations and out of that equation, he predicted the existence of antimatter. And glimpsing the power of his discovery, he expressed that fascination with these words. One could perhaps say that God is a mathematician of very high order and he used very advanced mathematics in constructing the universe. Please listen to those words carefully. One could perhaps say that God is a mathematician of very high order and he used very advanced mathematics in constructing the universe. So here is the man who by using the power of mathematics predicted the structure of almost half of the universe that universe has anti-matter. In 2002, the centenary year of Dirac's birth, the theoretical physicist Kurt Gottfried said these words, I quote, physics has produced other far-fetched predictions that have subsequently been confirmed by experiment. But Dirac's prediction of anti-matter stands alone in being motivated solely by faith in pure theory, without any hint from data, and at revealing a deep and universal property of nature. Then comes positron. Dirac's equation also predicted the existence of positron. Electrons should have a partner, an anti-electron. Everybody was shocked and surprised. We know about protons and electrons, but what is anti-electron? Is this a joke? Is this some kind of science fiction? Even Paul Dirac had difficulty accepting that proposition. He was like Einstein in this matter. Einstein's theory of relativity predicted that the universe must be accelerating, expanding. But Einstein could not accept his own equation because atheists like Fred Hoyle they convinced the scientific community that the universe had no beginning. It had no expansion, no acceleration. It was always static. 
but finally einstein recognized his mistake and accepted that universe is in fact expanding in the same way paul dirac he could not accept what his own equation is predicting the existence of an antiparticle to electron during those years physicists were familiar with only electrons and protons dirac thought that uh, the positive counterparts of electrons must be protons but that would not work because if electrons and protons could annihilate each other no atoms would be stable but most atoms are stable so the proton cannot be the positive counterpart of electron in dirac's equation finally in may 1931 dirac accepted the ramifications of the equation he must have the courage to make the final prediction the negatively and positively charged particles in his equation indeed have equal masses he said if there were one would be an entirely new kind of matter today physicists hypothesize many different kinds of subatomic particles right and left anti muon anti neutrino anti proton anti neutron anti this anti that we take them seriously because we have seen them discovering many particles amazing particles like higgs boson but those days it was a preposterous idea to think about an anti particle so from 1928 to 1931 it took paul dirac 3 years to accept the consequences of his own equation then comes 1932 carl anderson a physicist at california institute of technology was reading dirac's work those days they did not have particle accelerators anderson could only use cosmic rays to study particle physics after one experiment he was looking at cloud chamber photographs and was amazed to see the track of a particle with the same mass as electron but with opposite electrical charge anti electron also called positron was no longer an imaginary particle carl anderson discovered positron and the discovery of positron in 1932 confirmed dirac's theory Dirac was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1933. Carl Anderson was also awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1936 for the discovery of positron. When an electron and positron meet, they annihilate and energy is released in the form of photons. The world woke up to a new realization of reality. There are two different types of substances matter and antimatter two types of particles particles of matter like protons neutrons and electrons and particles of antimatter like anti proton anti neutron and anti electron not only it has scientific value but we have a new understanding of the universe it has technological value too For example a trillion dollar nanotechnology was born out of that in his memorial address for Dirac Stephen Hawking said if Dirac had patented his equation like some people are now patenting human genes he would have become one of the richest men in the world every television set or computer would have paid him royalties So this is not science fiction folks. Take how discovery of positron changing medical science. Positron emission tomography PET scans. You can detect signs of early disease at cellular level, the functional level. PET scans are diagnosing cancer, Alzheimer's disease, brain tumors long before we could see them on other scans. in a pet scan we see this beautiful fusion of human anatomy and physiology with dirac's quantum mechanics physics and biology are coming together dirac died on october 20 1984 
at the age of 82 due to cardiac arrest. He was buried in Roseland Cemetery, Tallahassee, Florida. On the white marble stone, some words spoken by Dirac were engraved. Because God said it should be so. Because God said it should be so. It reminded me the words from Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, and God said. On Monday, 13 November 1995, there was a memorial service to Dirac in Westminster Abbey. Stephen Hawking gave the final address and called it Paul Dirac, the greatest theoretical physicist since Newton. The congregation sang the hymn, Lord of Beauty, Thine the Splendor. Lot of beauty. It's a melodious conclusion of a life that went on a quest to discover beauty in mathematical realm of the universe. Dirac's equation and its prediction of positron is one of the greatest achievements in science. Dirac predicted it from the power of mathematics. Note his words. God is a mathematician of very high order and he used very advanced mathematics in constructing the universe. We read in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens here means universe. The universe declares the glory of God. He wrote it in the language of mathematics. That God manifested to us in the person of Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a sinless life and died on the cross for our sins, for your sins and my sins. And on the third day, conquered grave to give us the hope of eternal life. In the beauty of mathematics, we see the perfection of God's wisdom. And in the face of Jesus Christ, we see the perfection of God's love. I hope you see that beauty, that glory of God in mathematical realm. Paul Dirac did that and praised God with his life. Thank you.